well, hello everybody. I was asked to speak about uh, the products, WSO pro uh, products, which are used in the Swiss government. So well, we'll do that uh, the next 15 minutes. We used uh, WSO2 products in the two biggest um, platforms, which are also strategic. And um, the name of them is IDEC and also Fiscality. And um, what we are understanding with platforms is a platform is a bunch of applications which are communication over an, an ESP um, technology. So let me introduce these two platforms in three steps. Step number one is the business case more, um, with which I want uh, to explain you um, how these two platforms are working. Then in a second step, I will give an overview of the architectures. And finally, um, what are the success factors if you introduce WSO2 uh, products? So let me start with the business case. It's all about chocolate. I thought um, I will take chocolate as an example, as a business case, but uh, despite of speaking here all the time about digitai uh, to, be, to digitize everything, the new trend in chocolate is the analog chocolate. So it's quite different. But uh, why the, uh, did I took the chocolate? Because chocolate is well known, Swiss chocolate special is well known all over the world. And um, a lot of people are really loving the chocolate. And that's also why I took some with me and it will be on the desk there. So after the talk, help yourself with a piece of chocolate, of Swiss chocolate. And um, just as an example, American people are eating more than six kilos chocolate per year. But this is nothing against Swiss people. Swiss people e even eat more than 11 kilograms a year. And even Chinese people start to love chocolate. They start with 100 grams of um, chocolate per year. So after, after explaining you the reason why I took the chocolate, uh, the selling and, pro, uh, pro, um, and uh, the produce of the chocolate, I will now explain this um, manufacturing and the selling in three steps. So sorry for that, I forget to change the slide. But now we get to the first step. Switzerland is a beautiful country, has a lot of mountains, but unfortunately the climate is too cool and therefore cacao beans are not growing in Switzerland. We have to import them from uh, uh, Africa and South America and we do that the amount of cacao beans, which are important, are 44 million kilograms a year. So that's the first step. Using these cacao beans and adding, the choc um, adding Swiss sugar and Swiss milk, that's a special Swiss cow, as you can see. Um, we produce around 180 million kilograms chocolate a year. So that's quite a bit. And um, we sell 65 uh, million kilogram in Switzerland. And uh, if you sell a product in Switzerland, you have to pay VAT, the value added tax. And uh, this is quite complex and we will talk about that a bit later. 
So, 115 um, million kilograms, that is two-thirds, are exported all over the world. And uh, the destinations, the major destinations are Germany, but also America. So, now, we have here the EDEC platform, and EDEC is the abbreviation of electronic declaration. For the step one and three, which I explained before, we need this platform EDEC. You have to declare every good which is going through Switzerland. Even if you don't use it, you have to declare it. And that means if this platform is not working, we have outside the borders lines of kilometers because the uh, lorries cannot pass through Switzerland. So this is quite important. But as you see, we have uh, a lot of stakeholders and each stakeholder has its own or their own uh, particular needs. And that makes the things very difficult. So EDEC was already um, established more than 10 years ago. And you can imagine everything is evolving historically. That means you um, want um, the, stakeholders, the stakeholders have more and more ideas how to improve the platform. And this means it's getting very difficult to exchange uh, technologies. But we will see that a little bit later. Now for case, for the second step, we use the fiscal IT. Fiscal IT is everything about VAT. And it seems that it's really easy because it's sketched in, in a very um, simple way. But the truth is, we have a lot of forms, and we accept even forms from 1956. And this means we have um, two dozen, uh, dozens of forms which we have to accept. And everyone has its own um, process. So the advantage of fiscal IT platform is it was established um, from scratch because before everything was done more or less manually and now the VAT administration wants to automatize, I would say, not, um, not Uberize because then you would do everything with your iPhone, but still um, do things easier, faster and so on. So what about the architecture? EDEC platform, as I told you, grew in a historical way, and that means you had a lot of different protocols. As you can see here, HTTPS, that's normal, but POP3, FTPS, and so on. It's not all the protocols on um, this slide. It was not enough space for that. And on the other side, all the application, or almost all the application based on Oracle WebLogic server. And as you know, WSO2 is not able to connect WebLogic server because of the XA um, architecture. This is a special architecture supporting distributed uh, um, processes. And what we are doing here is we just take out the old, um, the old product and put in WSO2. And this makes it quite a challenging task. But uh, what I can tell you, this is the second new thing about WSO2, not only ballerina, because we could also use very well uh, ballerina, but uh, in a few weeks, you get this uh, feature, the XA feature for free. So it's all, everybody can also use this feature. What about the fiscal IT? Here we have other requirements. And um, the most 
um, challenging thing is um, the chief architect decided to be very modular. And that means he just took the, be uh, the best of breed for each feature. So, and that means at, at the end that we have different technologies like FileNet, Java, SAP, DomTrack, and other ones which we have to integrate. And this is quite challenging because basically everything is working the same way, but in detail it's quite different. And especially SAP is very limited to, um, um, to connect and to uh, um, process, pre-process messages, and therefore we need to do that on the v, uh, WSO2 components. So the, here, the problem here is that we go in direction of microservices. That means we have a lot of APIs, REST and SOAP. And on the other side, we have also JMS. And um, it's very important that this is, can be done in a flexible way. And this means in the ESB, you have to find a very flexible um, software architecture and also a way to maintain all these routes in an easy way. I think we got there and uh, as I know I don't see it because of the light but uh, the people who did that are in the audience. So now we come to the WSO2 um, uh, architecture. Here you see we use especially the API manager, the ESP, this message broker. What is not uh, sketched here is the identity server and the DAS, so the data analytics server and the DSS, that's uh, the service server. So we have uh, quite a, bit, uh, a lot of different components in here. And what you also see, we have a lot of interfaces. And I think I would enjoy if I could already use now uh, the ballerina, because we have so many connections and all of them has to, to work, otherwise we get a problem. And this is not easy because we um, counted once um, roughly the number of parameters. We have 2,000. So with WSO2, you can do everything. That's uh, the advantage. On the other thing, uh, side, you have also to manage uh, the uh, configuration. And this is not always very easy. On the other side, you have also uh, a re real a big flexibility. That means we are able to fulfill all the requirements on both platforms. And we decided for both platforms to introduce the same architecture. The reason for that is cost, but also automatization, because otherwise you do, do it twice. And also it's less error prone because if you have now one uh, architecture, you don't need to think, oh, here on IDEC, it's different than on fiscal IT. How, is it, how was it done now, the configuration? How was it done here? Because we already experienced that this can be very uh, time consuming. So the DAS, he, uh, um, plays an important role, and, um, even if it's not sketched on, on, on this slide. And uh, we, um, together with, with um, um, our service provider, we developed a dashboard, which allows us very quickly to find problems, even the problems of the application. For example, we are able to say, oh, you know what, you have no access to the WSO2 products, or the application itself is not working correctly, and uh, 
this can be done very quickly, so we can just type in the source program and the destination program uh, application, and uh, within a few seconds we get every message, but not the content, but only the meta, um, the meta information of all the messages. And then we see, oh, here we have a problem because an error occurred, or here we can also cor even correlate the messages with the log files, and so we are really fast to find problems because this is key in such a distributed um, application landscape. So, um, in short, the summary. It's very important, the collaboration with, uh, with the service provider. This is common sense, but what is also very important is a tight collaboration with WSO2. That's why people told me that, told you that they know me very well, because we have really a tight collaboration. And we have also great service providers. They are also with us. And uh, both of these um, uh, points are really important to get along because still the, pro uh, the product is evolving so fast. Tomorrow you get an, a new uh, feature and the day after an, again another one and so on and so on. And if you, it's almost impossible to get pace with this, um, this speed and therefore the WSO2 contact is uh, really uh, a good uh, thing. At the end, we spoke already a lot about automatization. And automatization is also very important. Why? So uh, for fiscal IT, we have seven stages. Imagine you want to keep them equal or similar um, manually. It's impossible. And on the other side, um, on the EDEX side, we have four stages. So basically, basically, these are 11 stages which we have to manage. And the pace is quite, quite fast. So every two weeks, we have to release. And um, that means releasing new versions or new features. And I don't know if you already did yourself um, enabled SSO, single sign-on. It's not an easy way. You have to know exactly how to do that, how to uh, build up the REST information, the SOAP information, and so on. So automatization is very important, but it's also important for another reason. We want to investigate how WSO2 products behave when you build up them from scratch. But on the other side, you need also to have an incremental installation. And how will WSO2 products behave? Do they uh, behave in the same way or not? And uh, this um, you have to investigate and without an automatization, it's impossible because we need around four to five hours for manual installation and just 20 minutes for an automatic installation. So that's more or less um, my story. As I told you, please help yourself with a piece of Swiss chocolate and I hope you uh, uh, will dream then uh, a sweet uh, this night. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>